Well, hello, YouTube friends. This then is the video that I've been hoping to make since the elderberries started to fill out on the trees and get filled with juice. Look at that. Now, I have two elder trees in the garden, but in the front woods where the hens live, there are loads more. So I'm not going to run out of elderberries anytime soon. Also, if I was to go for a walk around the dam, there's some more around there too. So um, I've got a lot of elderberries. If you remember back to the summer, and this is where my newfound skill of putting in eye cards, you'll see this tree, the one I took these from today, uh, with its flowers on. And I picked quite a lot of flowers to make elderflower fritters, do you remember? I think that's where it's supposed to be. Is that right? I think so. Uh, but I did, obviously didn't pick many because <laughs> there were hundreds and hundreds more uh, of these little bunches of elderberries that set from those flowers. It's been a phenomenal year for um, for fruits. The, the bushes and trees are dripping with fruit and I'm trying to use as much of it as I can. So there we go, that's what it looks like when all the um, berries are taken off. There's several ways of doing this. You can do it with a fork, you know, run the tines of, the fork, of a fork through, through the uh, stalks. I find it just as easy to do it with my fingers. It's very time consuming. And so what I'm gonna do is um, do strip all of these this morning. I did the same amount yesterday and then I'm going to put them all in a big pan covered with water and boil them so that they release their juice. Then they're going to go into a jelly bag, or in my case, just a couple of um, sheets of muslin, which are tied onto an upturned stool. That way they'll drip and release all that lovely juice. And tomorrow I can make the syrup. So I can do the first part of it now, but I can't do anything with this until it's dripped for a good 24 hours. So I'm going to strip all these off the stalks and I'll get back to you when I've done that. Well, that took a while. <laughs> so I've got all these gorgeous elderberries now. And all these stalks that can go in the compost bucket and I'm going to put them in a pan now. Well, first of all, I'm going to give them a really good wash in cold water and drain them. And then I'm going to put them in a pan and uh, boil them up so that all the juice is released. Let's do that now then. So here are all the elderberries then. I've had them boiling in this big pan. I just covered them with water and now I'm straining them through this muslin. I did give them a little bash around with the potato masher just to break them up a bit. That doesn't matter, there's plenty of juice coming out of them. So I'm going to put them in here. And then I've got this stool, a turn stool, and the juice is going to run into this pan. And I'm gonna cover this with a cloth when I've got it all in and leave it for uh, 24 hours. we get started. I've tried every light on, off, move the camera, do this, do that. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. 
and the light is very low in the sky in the west over there, which means that it's flooding through these two windows. Can't do anything about that. It's actually rather beautiful, but it means you can't see terribly well. <laughs> it's a good 24 hours since I put the elderberries to drip through this uh, contraption here, which is an upturned stool, um, cheesecloth on here, and uh, the cooked elderberries uh, dripping through into a vessel below. Now, this morning I decanted three litres into this big pan. Then I put all this mashed up elderberry back into a different pan, smashed them up a bit more, boiled them up with a bit more water, and now I've dripped probably in this big container here. I've probably dripped another litre. Let's see. Here's my litre jug. Let's have a look. One more litre, which makes four litres in there. Just going to put it on a heap there. Next thing I need to do, all the recipes I've read say, um, for a pint of liquid that's dripped through here, you need a pound of sugar. And I've made this a few times and that's far, far too sweet. Okay, so I have four litres of fluid in there and I'm just gonna bring it up to a very gentle boil. As I say, the recipe says, so for this, it would be a kilo of sugar for each litre of fluid. It's too much. I, I'm going to use 750 grams of sugar. And in my experience in the past, that's fine. Even that's a huge amount of sugar. Just watch how much sugar I'm going to measure out here. It's far too much. I've got my scale here. I've got it set to grams. And I've got an enormous bag of sugar. Now I buy this sugar, this is granulated sugar, uh, so that I can make sugar syrup to feed my bees. So I buy a lot of this and it works very well for this as well. So I'm going to put 750 grams in here four times, which is going to go against the grain somewhat, but I'm going to do it. In it goes. One. Four. What I then have to do, I just have to bring it to a very, very small, low boil and simmer it for 10 minutes and then it's done. Now I'm going to bring it up to a good rolling boil and then turn it right off because that's all it's going to need. It's an amazing colour. I filled those sterile bottles with very hot water from the tap so that when this hot syrup goes in it won't crack the cold bottles. I just take my time, do it really carefully. Oh, it's hot. that haven't got aren't quite full. So it's not ten green bottles, it's ten purple bottles. These are really, really hot. I'm very stiff, so I'm very carefully putting these immensely strong seals on them. Oh, it's 
very, very hard to do. Oh, that's good. I'll just leave them to cool down there now. So, thank you for watching once more and I'll catch up with you next time. I've got a few ideas for where we're going to go next, but I think I've finished with preserves for now. Thanks for watching. Catch up with you soon.